Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're going to look at time dilation. So let's get started. So we start with an important definition, which is the definition of time dilation. And it says here that time dilation is the apparent increase in time of an event for an object that is moving relative to an observer. So this idea of dilation, if something dilates, like if your pupils dilate, for example, that means they get bigger. So we're saying that time is getting bigger or longer. And that means that time is almost slowing down in a sense. So it's the apparent increase in time. And we say apparent because it's not necessarily increasing in time. It's just according to an observer and their frame of reference, time does appear to slow down. And we have an equation for this, which looks kind of complicated, but it's not really. And it says that t prime or t dash is equal to t divided by the square root of one minus v over c squared. Well, t prime is relativistic time as measured by an observer in a different frame of reference to the event. So when you're not near to the event, that is your relativistic time that you would measure. T, which is over here, is the proper time as measured by an observer in the same frame of reference as the event. So if you're standing next to an event that's happening, you're going to measure the time T. V is relative velocity measured in meters per second, and C is the speed of light measured in meters per second. So that would be your three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And now says to consider the following thought experiment to help you understand this. So let's say you're in a spaceship traveling to the left at speed V. Inside the spaceship cabin, a pulsed laser beam is pointed vertically up at the ceiling and is reflected back down. The laser emits another pulse when the reflected pulse is detected by a photodiode. So just to show you what I mean, here's a little animation. So let's say we have a mirror on the ceiling and that's what's going to reflect our light pulse. So if I click play here, you'll see the pulse of light moves up hits off the mirror and comes back down. So let's say the first reference frame is you inside the cabin. So the beam goes straight up, reflects off the ceiling and travels straight down. So let's say that the height of the cabin is a distance of H. Then we could say that the period of the pulse, which is the time taken for it to start at the source, travel all the way up to the mirror and all the way back down, is going to travel a distance of 2H. And using speed distance time, we can rearrange for time to get time equals distance over speed. But we are saying that the distance here is a distance of 2h. So we can put in t equals 2h here divided by our speed, which is going to be the speed of light because it's light that we're talking about. So in this case, we've derived a little equation t equals 2h over c for how long it's going to take that light to travel upwards and back downwards. And remember, that's for the frame of reference of you inside the cabin. And let's assume we've got a second frame of reference, which is an observer on a nearby spaceship moving at a velocity v. That's a mistake there. It shouldn't say stationary. So it's moving to the left with the velocity v. And just to show you what would happen to the pulse of light, I'm just going to show you another animation. So there's the first frame of reference. You can just ignore all the text. And if we click play, you'll see the second frame of reference. So imagine that's a guy on board the spaceship which is moving with a velocity v. Now what would happen is because this person is moving in their frame of reference, then when we start the pulse of light that moves upwards, they're going to see the beam of light travel like this. So it's going to travel horizontally as well as vertically. Whereas for the first observer, they're still going to observe the pulse moving up and down. So we've got the first frame of reference is the pulse of light moving up and down. And the second frame of reference with the observer moving relative to the first frame of reference shows the light to move vertically as well as horizontally. So we get this kind of shape for the beam of light. It says here that the beam appears to travel horizontally as well as vertically. We've just seen that since the spaceship is moving at speed V. So if that's the cabin from the first frame of reference and you're moving to the left in a nearby spacecraft, the light's going to appear to move up and down as well as along the way. So we can come up with an expression for the period of the pulse just like we did in the first case. So because we're now in a frame of reference that is moving relative to that first frame of reference, we're not going to measure the proper time like we did in the first scenario. We're going to measure a relativistic time here. So we're going to call it t prime or t dash. And let's say that the distance d is the length of this part here and then the length of this part here. So let's say we're traveling a total distance of 2d here. So that would mean that t prime equals 2d divided by our speed c. So that's just our speed distance time. So time equals distance over speed gives us t prime equals 2d over c. Again, we're using c because it's light we're talking about here, and that's the speed of light. And the conclusion is then since d is greater than h, so we're saying this length here is greater than this height of the cabin, then we can say the time for the event as measured by the observer in the nearby spaceship t prime is greater than the time observed by you when moving with the photodiode, which is a time t, the proper time. And that's the time measured in the first frame of reference in the cabin. And the reason we can say that t prime is greater than t is because d is greater than h. That means the numerator here 
in this expression is greater than the numerator in this expression, the 2h over c. So that means that our t prime value here is just going to be greater overall than this t value. So in this case, we're seeing that two observers are disagreeing about the times that they are measuring. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa!